Hi everyone. I hope this short video will be enough to set up the Google Doc survey assignment for you and get you started in the absence of having um, a face-to-face -face over Google Hangouts. So here we go. Uh, we're taking a look at the Google Docs assignment, um, the Google Docs survey assignment. The goal of this assignment, again, in the big scheme of the ONID program, is to set up a research process that you can use for research that requires that you survey an audience and collect and interpret and report their responses. So we're approaching this as a survey tool for research, but in the case of your own work in this, in this, uh, on this assignment, you can pretty much take it in any direction you want to. Before we get into the overall concept of the assignment, let me show you what the assignment first of all says. There's some readings in chapter six through eight of The World is Open. Again, you're gonna be using the uh, Digo tag for the research that you do about this topic, any documents that you find that are related to this topic. Basically, the assignment asks you to create a Google survey and submit it to your cohort. Now, in terms of your cohort, this is a very small cohort, so obviously there aren't gonna be a lot of meaningful results in a cohort of only five people, or four, not including yourself. But you are encouraged to submit it to any kind of constituency outside of that cohort that you like. So if you're a teacher or working um, at a university or whatever, this can be a survey that you submit to your professional colleagues or to another outside group that you think might be interested in the results of the survey. The focus of the survey, as it says in the assignment, can be very broad or it can be very specific. There are a couple of things it does require, and they are explained right here. Your survey should be comprised of at least 12 related questions, different kinds of questions, text, multiple choice, checkbox, choose from a list, and scaled response questions. There should be some branching logic, which I'll explain a little bit more in a minute, and whatever other questions you feel are necessary to get your point across. This is quite important. Before you submit your survey to the core, email it to yourself so that you can proof it. Make sure that the questions flow correctly. Think of the assignment in terms of how a person would interpret it, not how you would interpret it, to make sure the question makes sense in sequence. And then, after you've submitted it to yourself, you, you're welcome to and encouraged to submit it to me so that I can take a look at it and make sure that it meets the assignment uh, standards. The reasoning there is this, that if you do send out a survey to all of your cohort and then it turns out that you need to make some improvements on it, then you need to resend it and they need to answer it again and that gets a little bit old. So it's a really good idea to get your site, your survey correct before you do the sending out of that survey to your cohort and, and getting the final results. Then you're asked to reflect on the data. Um, did the tool work for you? Did it not work for you? Is it easy to use? Is it gonna be a useful research tool? And you are also asked to reflect on the data created by creating charts. Now, as you'll find out very quickly, the Google spreadsheet itself creates its own charts, or you're welcome to create your own charts from the spreadsheet data in some other format. Those should be embedded into your blog entry with an explanation of what they are. Uh, and it's likely, of course, that you'll have multiple charts in there that you can pick directly from your survey summary of responses. And that's essentially what the assignment asks you to do. Now, there is some instruction down here. There are a couple of older videos that actually were created for another class that I taught, but they're still pretty useful in giving you an overall picture of what Google Docs surveys are, even though they're a bit dated. If you've used this tool before, you can certainly skip that. You don't really need to look at them. But if you're kind of curious about what the broad range of Google Docs surveys can do, that might not be a bad idea. Below that are links to a bunch of specific instruction about different aspects of creating a Google Docs form. I refer to that as a survey sometimes in this, in this context. And these are from Atomic Learning. If you haven't used Atomic Learning before, if you go to the Get Starting page here, you'll see more information about how to first log into Atomic Learning. If you have questions about a specific aspect of creating a Google Form, this is a pretty good way to do it. Uh, log in first to Atomic Learning, come back to this page, click on the link. If you want to understand how to publish a form, for example, you will start up an Atomic Learning survey. I'm sorry. You'll there start up an atomic learning you lesson. Publish or share your Google Docs spreadsheet. That'll give you very specific instructions, usually very targeted. Usually, this is, is only a minute and a half long. Um, to give you very targeted instruction on how you do a specific a task in Google Forms. So the big deal about this one is that the the logic in your survey needs to flow, and a good way to do that is to use branching logic. For example, if you ask a question. 
to start off your um, survey, have any of you ever taken an, or I'm sorry, have you ever taken an online course? Yes or no? If the person asks yes, you might branch to one point in your survey that talks about that. If the person says no, then they don't need to go through that entire part of the survey. They'll branch to another part of the survey that asks them some additional questions. And so branching logic is the tool that lets you do that. There are good explanations in the videos here about how that works. And in terms of the way your survey works, that's the piece that you probably need to pay the most attention to in terms of the flow of the survey. In other words, if you ask a yes or no question, and the response to that means that some part of the survey is invalid or useless to a person, or they need to go to another place in the survey to continue something else, that's where this branching logic will help. It does take a little bit of experimenting to do if you haven't done it before. This is why you shouldn't send out your survey until you've really got it working the way you want it to. But that's the basic gist of this assignment. Look at the readings that have to do with the kinds of portals and services and tools that the, that the chapter six and eight of the world is open is talking about. Broaden your perspective as far as you want to, narrow it as closely as you want to. You're welcome to check with me and the cohort to see if your focus is, is something that is useful. I'll probably say yes, because if it's useful to you, it's going to be useful to someone else. Create your survey, mail it to yourself, make sure it looks right, mail it to me so that I can take a look at it and make sure that it meets the standards that it needs to meet, and then submit that to your cohort. This obviously is going to take more time than usual because it's depending on your cohort to respond as well as you to fix this up. So we have a period of about three weeks to do this. Two of those weeks, obviously, I'll be in Spain. That's why I'm recording this for you first, but I will have internet access and I'll be able to respond to your questions either directly to me or through the, um, hopefully through the Google Plus community. And I'm encouraging you to get as much of, obviously, the three-week period at the end of which, if you haven't sent your survey out, you're going to be behind the um, eight ball in terms of getting the assignment finished because part of the assignment is to send it out, receive the data, manipulate the data, and then reflect on that process. So try to time it so that your survey is done as quickly as possible so that you can send it out as quickly as possible so that you'll have time to collect the data and reflect on it. I'll give you a specific date for both the mobile tools survey and the um, Google Docs, I'm sorry, the mobile tools assignment and the Google Docs survey on the Google Plus page. But keep that period of three weeks in mind for completing this assignment so that you don't get too far behind by not getting your, your a survey out to people before you have enough time to reflect on it and finish your blog entry. I hope this helps. The community is the place to talk about it and uh, have fun with it.